How are you? And welcome to this, the first video episode of Cyberpunk Librarian. I am your host, Daniel Messer, your friendly neighborhood cyberpunk librarian. And on this episode, we're going to talk about why Linux isn't scary and why you should care about Linux in the first place. Now, let's start with the second one first, because I always like to go backwards with these things. Why should you care about Linux? Well, there's, a, there's always, it seems to be, a machine in a library that's old. Maybe you've got one. Take a look around your branch. See, have you got a computer that's just kind of sitting there? Maybe it's in the back. Maybe it's not even hooked up. It's just in a room gathering dust because IT hasn't taken it away because they haven't got any idea what to do with it. Well, why don't you use it? You know, you, you could use it for a lot of things. You could use it for a photo editing station. You could use it for video. You can use it to, you know, as another internet browsing station. You can set it up for people to check their email or whatever. It, there, there's dozens of reasons why you might want to use an old machine. But, you know, site licenses being what they are, maybe you don't have the, uh, the license or the authority to install a new version of Windows on it or even an older version of Windows. Fine. No problem, because that's what Linux is there for you to use. So I'm going to take you on a quick, maybe 30-minute tour of Linux. And I'm not going to show you some pre-configured, codgered up thing just for this show. You're going to get to see something that a lot of Linux shows and a lot of you know, tech shows don't do. They're going, I'm going to show you an actual production version of Linux. And by production version, I mean my production version. I'm going to show you the desktop that I use on a daily basis to get things done. And I don't mean something that I log into maybe browse Reddit, check the internet a little bit, get my email and get out and go to Windows. Mm -mm. I mean, when I'm done shooting this episode right now, I'm going to be editing it on that Linux desktop. So you're going to get a tour of an actual honest-to-goodness working version of Linux and why it's not so scary. Because a lot of people think that it's, you know, Linux is too techy or they're not techy enough for Linux. And the fact is, Nothing can be further from the truth. Can you use Windows? If the answer is yes, that's fine. Can you use a Mac OS of some kind? If the answer is yes, that's fine. If you answered yes to either one of those questions, you can use Linux, and I'm about to show you why. Let's take a look at my Linux desktop and take just, you know, a look around and sort of an unscheduled tour of what goes on on my computer. Okay, so this is what I see whenever I log into Linux. Now, this right here is the XFCE desktop. Now, uh, XFCE stands for XForms Common Environment, 
And really, that's it's that's kind of an old name. They they've done some things differently now, but the name stuck, so they still called XFCE. Now, the thing I like about XFCE is it's very fast. It's very lightweight. It's very easy to use, and you'll find it looks a lot like any other operating system you may as you may have used at your job or on your own computers at home. So uh, let's take a look around here. We've got an applications menu up here, which is you know a lot like a start menu got accessories and all, all kinds of stuff up here. Um, I've got a taskbar right here's a little program recording this video. So you know I can minimize it with the same you know little line underscore that you'll find in Windows. I could close it out by clicking the X button. you know there's really no difference there. So let's just put that away. Um, down here at the bottom, when you first log into XFCE, you usually have a different kind of launcher down here. I don't like it very much, so I turn it off. It's real easy. You right-click and tell it to go away. And I have this other program called Docky. And Docky is just pretty much like the, uh, the launcher you might find on a MacBook or something like that, where it's just your common programs that you want to put down here that you use on a regular basis. And you can see it does the whole growing and shrinky thing, and you know, it looks very appealing, but it's very useful. So you have to realize that in Linux, you live out of a home directory. Here's my home directory, conveniently labeled home, and it even has a little picture of a house on it. Notice that everything kind of makes sense. Here's a trash can, looks like a trash can. File system looks like a hard drive, and my home directory is a folder. So let's open that up. All right, here's my home directory. Now, you'll notice it's a folder structure, just like Windows, just like Mac OS. I mean, there's nothing sort of new or odd here. So this is what I'm saying. This is why Linux isn't scary. If you're used to using Windows, you, you'll be fine here. It's very much the same thing. And, you know, there's folders that are named much the same way. I mean, here's a music folder. It's even got an eighth note on it. you got pictures and video and all that stuff. So all of that's here. And all of this information that I do goes to my home directory. Even this video. I mean, the, the video that I'm recording right now, it's this right here. So it's being saved right to my home directory. So, okay, let's, let's take a look around here. Now, obviously you've got folders, and the folders have stuff in them. You know, I launch the videos, there's some video stuff. And, you know, I launch music. I don't have a lot of music in here because I, uh, I have my uh, music on a separate hard drive. So, you know, not only got in here some sound effects, but you can put music in here. It's no big thing. You know, podcast, public, all that stuff. This is all pretty much the same exact thing that um, Windows has. It even has a little bar over here on the left-hand side of common places you can go. Here's my home directory. Here's my desktop, which you'll notice is pretty sparse. I keep a pretty empty desktop. Trash can, just like Windows, you know, just like Mac. File system, you know, common places like documents, music, pictures, videos. All that stuff is right there. So... This this shouldn't appear anything new or odd. Even the iconography up here, you know, little underscore to minimize, Ma maximize, minimize for the window. Say I can make it big, or I can you know do full screen or whatever. And if I click the X, well, it closes it just like any other file system. So, the thing you want to do in any operating system doesn't matter what it is, Linux, Mac, Windows, whatever. You want to get stuff done. And I'm sure you're used to, you know, apps that you use on, um, you know, on your Windows or Mac machines. So, you know, let's take a look at a couple apps real quick. Do you use Google Chrome? I do. Here it is right here. In Linux, it's called Chromium, but there's functionally no difference between the two. Let's, let's launch that out here. So here's Chromium. Takes it a second to load. There we go. And, you know, it looks exactly like Google Chrome. There's a Chrome web store that takes you to the Google Chrome store to get more, you know, extensions or applications or whatever you want, you know. Got different things here. All of this stuff works. All of it works fine. I've got various extensions up here that, uh, you know, that work both in Windows and Linux and wherever else you go. So, you know, here's Google Chrome, and it does the same things as any Google Chrome. Um, I seem to recall that some folks were worried about Flash support, you know, being able to watch videos or whatever. That's not a problem. Let's go to YouTube, for instance. All right. Here's YouTube. Yeah, nothing, nothing odd or strange. Let's um, let's go up here and let's go to uh, let's find a video. Let's try Co's Quest, for instance. I love Co's Quest. Go ahead and search for that. Yep, here we go. Let's try this one. All right. Give it a second to sort of buffer. And there we go. Loading up here. Turn up the volume so you can hear. See? It's working fine. 
So yeah, you can watch YouTube, you can watch videos. There's, it's got better flash support than an iPad. So, you know, that there's nothing stopping you from using this. All your apps are there. If you like Firefox, well, it actually comes with Firefox. I had to go get Chrome to install on here. You know, a lot of people think that, um, you know, that Linux is this thing. It's the terminal. And certainly there is a terminal, and you can, you know, type Linux commands in here and find out all kinds of information and stuff like that if you're interested. But you really don't have to use it as much anymore. You know, I don't hardly use it at all except for really sort of like involved things where I know that a few commands will be a lot easier to do something than just clicking. So let's get out of the terminal. But I've got all kinds of stuff here that I use all the time in both Windows and Linux. Um, I use the Audacity recorder to record audio and, you know, edit audio. I've got GIMP for image editing and stuff. That works in Windows and Linux. And it's, in my opinion, it's just as good as Photoshop unless you're, you know, a Photoshop Pro. Because, you know, in my experience, when I was using Photoshop, I was probably getting $86 out of a $600 program. It just, you know, it wasn't cost effective. Uh, I've got the VLC media player, you know, just like in Windows. And it's awesome in Linux. Works really well. So I've got all of these apps, and you can get, you know, pretty much any app to do anything you want. You might have to do some looking around. A Google search will do you well. And, you know, that's the other thing. How do you get apps? You know, you can go to the web and download them, I suppose. But there's one thing that Linux has, especially Ubuntu, which is what this is based off of. Um, there's one thing that Ubuntu and Linux has over a lot of the other operating systems that they're just now getting. And that's an app store. Now, Mac OS has got an app store and has for a little while. And, you know, Windows is just now starting to get one. Microsoft is just now starting to launch a real app store with Windows 8. Meanwhile, Linux has had one for years. And if I come up here to the Applications menu, which, like I said, is just like a Start menu, you hit that. And here we go, the Ubuntu Software Center. Takes it a second to load up here. Doo -doo, there. All right. So, it's going to go out. This is actually basically a glorified web browser. And it's going to pull in the latest information and, you know, basically just kind of like an iTunes app store where you're going to have featured apps up here at the top and what's new and all kinds of stuff like that. So, uh, for instance, you know, you can browse by, you know, a category. If you know what you're looking for, you can just, you know, go get it. And most of these things are free. Some things cost money. But, you know, for the most part, I'd say at least 95%, if not more, is free. So, for instance, um, Stellarium. This is an awesome astronomy uh, application. It's kind of like a uh, planetarium, you know, track stars and stuff like that. Say I'm interested in that. I click it. Give it a second. There we go. It's going to tell me all about it. You know, 3D photorealistic skies in real time. You know, here's some features. I can find out what people have rated it. You know, this one only thought it was worth four stars. Down here, five, four. I can see the ratings. I can get more reviews if I need to. Installing it is just as simple as a button click. If I click that, and I'm not going to put you through that right now because I'm on a wireless connection. You know, it would literally just go get it, download it, install it, and done. Um, let, let me find an uh, app that I've already got installed, for instance. Let's go back here. I know I've got Inkscape. I got Inkscape out here. No, okay, let's go. Let's just do a search. Inkscape. Inkscape's a vector program, kind of like Adobe Illustrator. You can make vector graphics with it. And when I click it, you'll notice it doesn't say install. It says remove. Well, that's because I've already got it. So I know just by looking at this, oh, I've already got it, Inkscape. But if I still want more info, I can get that. There we go. And, it, you know, it gives me more info and beautiful screenshot. You know, once again, I've got the reviews. And it also tells me where to find it. Find it in the menu, XFCE, Graphics, Inkscape. And sure enough, here's the menu, Graphics, Inkscape, right there. So you can get apps really easily, and you don't even have to go to the web. You can just go to the software center. And they typically keep everything updated there fairly well. And the nice thing is, is anything you install from here, keeps getting updated. So if there's an update, you're going to get updates. I'm going to close that out for a second. So as you see, everything is here that you could need 
for a very decent little setup for whatever you want to do. Do you want people to be able to check their online email? They can do it. Here's a web browser. Do you want them to be able to, uh, you know, maybe type up documents or stuff like that? There's a very good uh, word processor called LibreOffice Writer, which is part of the LibreOffice suite, that will do word processing like a champ. Here you go. It looks a lot like Microsoft Word in many cases. And it works like any other word processor. Or they could use Google Docs through the browser. And LibreOffice comes with spreadsheets and, you know, a PowerPoint clone and all that stuff. So that's there for you. Um, you know, if you want a video editing station, right? Here's Caden Live. That is what I use to edit these videos. Um, you know, if you need sort of a, uh, a teleconferencing solution, here's Jitsi, which is a uh, teleconferencing solution, works with Google Talk. You can get Skype for Linux, so you could set up a, you know, a little Skype machine or whatever. The point is, is you can take an old computer and give it new life, make it do something for you in your library, all for free as long as you've got the hardware the software is free so that's just a quick look around and you know back to me Sorry, I, uh, I was uh, just checking out some frighteningly popular literature. Um, so, I hope that was a at least somewhat informative tour of a real Linux desktop, so you can see kind of what's going on and you know what happens there, and that it's not scary. It looks a lot like Windows, doesn't it? They actually all kind of look a lot like Windows because, for better or worse, that's a pretty easy and decent scheme for organizing information on your computer. So you'll find that there's a lot of similarities between Mac OS and various desktops of Linux and Windows and various desktops of Linux. And you'll find that places like, you know, Unity or XFCE kind of combine the two in weird and wild ways that you may or may not like. The real trick is, is that you can have multiple desktops. So, you know, look into that. I'll put some links in the show notes that kind of show you that, you know, if you use Ubuntu or something like that, it's real easy to get multiple desktops. So if you don't like Unity, and I don't, but you might, probably not, but you know, if you don't like Unity, you can get a hold of, say, KDE or XFCE or any number of them. There's so many out there. There's got to be something for you that you can use to get something done with. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Check back in the next couple weeks. We'll have a new episode up fairly soon. I am Daniel Messer, your friendly neighborhood cyberpunk librarian, and I'll be seeing you next time around. There was it. <laughs> <laughs> he had her sign a contract. <laughs> God.